I won't make the mistake of advancing this next slide. Our next award is for distinguished leadership for a professional planner. This year's winner is Lee Gibson. Statement, um, the nominator quoted, a CEO of an integrated agency which serves as a metropolitan planning organization, public transit operator, and street highway agency, Lee Gibson serves the citizens of Reno Sparks Metro area and unincorporated Washington County. Since his appointment in 2009 to this position, Mr. Gibson is focused on uh, customer service, partnerships, collaboration, reducing agency operating costs, and using alternative programs, um, oh, I'm sorry, using alternative project and program delivery methods. Uh, representative results include Nevada APA 2013 DeVore Award for Public Outreach Program uh, of the 2035 Regional Transportation Plan, development of RAPID, the RDC's Bus Rapid Transit sy System, and Complete Streets and Sustainable Highway Design um, throughout the Truckee Meadows. And I will add, his contribution to the chapter has been um, equally as impressive. He, uh, as a director of an agency, he is always approaching a chapter to find out different ways that um, his organization can get involved in, in APA and how he can encourage other organizations to get involved in APA. Um, one of the comments from one of the judges in reviewing this said, from the materials provided, Lee has done a quality job leading RTC, especially through some challenging issues such as the Southeast Connector and innovative projects such as the BRT implementation and Fourth Street Station project. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Um, I, I'm at a loss for words, which is rare for me. Uh, and uh, I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, we as planners really, uh, I, I, was, I was very interested today. You know, we saw a lot of great uh, ideas, especially in the law session. Um, we need to remember that uh, we play, we're not just mere planning or mere planners. Uh, we are often the uh, instigators, and we should always take seriously our role as instigator, uh, but for our instigation and conspiring to do things, our friends in the engineering, finance, and uh, uh, other disciplines may not have something to do. So yeah. let's keep on instigating, let's keep on conspiring, and let's keep moving forward, uh, because our state, <clears throat> and I've had the opportunity to work in both parts of our state, our state is, uh, is, a, is, is really needs our services. So thank you very much. Since she began as executive director uh, for the Outside Las Vegas Foundation, after working for the Nature Conservancy and as a trial attorney for the United States Department of Justice, she has been dedicated to increasing the quality, quantity, and accessibility of trails and open space systems. She is a collaborative worker. She has built better connections uh, with the public, the business community, educators, advocacy organizations, and with planners at local, regional, at local and regional governments, including the RTC and Southern Nevada Regional Planning. Ultimately, her work as the head and uh, voice of outside Las Vegas has raised awareness of the hundreds of new miles of trails and paths, constru trails and paths constructed under uh, SNPLMA. Stiplema. Stiplema. <laughs> of course. <laughs> has elevated advocacy efforts to preserve public lands and open spaces, including the Tule Springs, Fossil Beds National Monument, Red Rock Canyon, Mount Charleston, and Lake Mead, and has ultimately improved the region's quality of life. Teresia, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, 
I just want to say that honestly, I think I'm really accepting this on behalf of all the planners that I work with here. So it's been an honor to work with such a wonderful group of people. You all do so much, and I love planners, and I love the process of planning for Nevada and Southern Nevada because it, as was said earlier, there's so much opportunity here, so much that we can do, and planning does touch so many different areas of who we are as a community. So thank you, this is a, a true honor, it really is. Thank you very much. So before we move into our outstanding plans, um, I should have started the, with this. Um, our, our really, our true award uh, <laughs> is, is on the front table here, the DeBull Awards, uh, the tongue in cheek award that we have. And this is, um, you know, this is for those of you that are, are new, or, or I guess for Cynthia's benefit too. <laughs> the Bull Awards um, are our kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, award to uh, recognize somebody who's making a contribution um, to planning, to the chapter, uh, but maybe isn't getting recognized fully. And so this is something we kind of do for fun. Um, what we have is this bucket here. Um, we've got post-it notes in there. If you write a name on the post-it note and attach it to money, cash, okay? Drop it in the bucket, and what we do is we collect that money and that goes towards our scholarship fund. And just so you all know, um, our scholarship fund for the last couple years has actually been going to help young planners um, uh, to take the ICP, AICP exam. So we help with their um, application fees and some things like that to help them with their uh, AICP exam application. So please be generous, and the winner of the award is the, the person that generates the most cash. Okay, so we'll uh, start over here. So make sure you write the name on there and attach buckets, okay? <laughs> and then this will be uh, the winner. This will be donned in their office for the next year, and then they have the responsibility of uh, delivering it safely back to the conference next year in uh, Carson City. And you'll note there's some uh, duct tape currently holding it together. <laughs> it's been through the trials over the years. And then uh, they'll write their name on the bottom um, as kind of a living legacy for the school. Uh, next, I want to announce our poster winners. So we have our, our poster submissions from the students over there. And I am happy to say it was a landslide victory. Um, winner of all three places, because all three posters are his, <laughs> is uh, Ali Gandami from UNR. <laughs> planning awards. I can't see my paper from the flash here. Um, our first one is going to be uh, outstanding plan, our overall outstanding plan, sorry. And the winner this year is Vision 2045 Downtown Las Vegas Master Plan. This new plan takes a highly innovative perspective on the way different downtown areas and their communities are interconnected. It focuses on 12 districts, 10 transit and mixed-use hubs, and five centers of excellence that are aimed toward progressive growth across pivotal economic sectors and improved, li improved living standards for residents and visitors. Uh, for one of the judges um, said, this plan epitomizes innovation and excellence in master planning. It includes a strong outreach component, visioning, scenario planning, and stretch. Um, and goals, sorry. Um, the lead organization is obviously the city of uh, Las Vegas in collaboration with um, uh, RTKL, or Callison at RTKL, Assemblage Studios, Face Fully Warren, uh, Fair Pierce, The Integral Group, Kinley Horn, um, Kubot Consulting, Progressive Urban Management Associations, and the Tischler, and Tischler Vibes. 
So on behalf of the chapter, congratulations to the city of Las Vegas. for the last couple of years. And one of the things that we are, uh, we don't want this one to be one of those that sits on the shelf. I, I think this is a, a resounding thing that we hear in the profession about our plans. We, we make these beautiful plans and then they, they sit and they don't, uh, they don't get implemented. So that's really where we're taking this. We don't want it to just be a collection of uh, pretty pictures and um, really, uh, big goals and dreams, we want it to become some reality. So we're gonna to continue to work with the community and work with uh, the great planning staff to kind of make this uh, turn into a reality. So thank you. programs, techniques, and tools. This year's winner is the Lake, Morocco, Lake Tahoe State Route uh, 28 National Scenic Byway Quarter Management or Quarter Signage Master Plan. Uh, the purpose and intent of the plan was to leverage a partnership among various agencies with jurisdiction within the SR28 corridor to create consistency and wayfinding signage for the East Shore for vehicles, bicyclists, and pedestrians. The plan was developed um, to also improve highway safety by making wayfinding easier uh, for motorists and recreational users created a, a, to create a sense of place and unique identity for Lake Tahoe's East Shore, create interpretive opportunities uh, along the proposed East Shore Trail and provide a design manual for easy implementation by all agencies. Um, the reason this, this won is because of its implementation across uh, the Tahoe Basin and its ability to be used by multiple jurisdictions, which you will hear here in a second. This was um, uh, the, the primary stakeholder was uh, Washington County Regional Parks and Open Space, and so it will be accepting on Washington County's behalf. Uh, it was prepared by Wood Rogers, <coughs> it was funded by the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency, um, with partners that included Tahoe Transportation District, TRPA, NDOT, Nevada State Parks, United States Forest Service, Incline Village General Improvement District, Douglas County, Carson City, uh, the Washoe Tribe. Um, Tunnel Creek Cafe, a business owner, and the Tahoe Fund. So rallying all those few people together to uh, come to some sort of consensus on uh, logos and uh, wayfinding signage design was definitely a challenge and um, a success with this plan. So I'll be happy to chat for you. Congratulations. and journalism. The winner this year is the Reimagine Reno um, City of Reno Master Plan Update Public Participation Plan. <laughs> In April of 2015, the City of Reno launched a multi-year community-based effort to prepare a new master plan. Reimagine Reno is the name of the public, particip public participation component of the update. Almost 6,000 people participated in the first round of public engagement. Reimagine Reno website allowed the public to participate. A main call in line allowed um, folks to complete a 22 question survey that could be completed in as little as four minutes. Um, from one of the judges, um, Reno's public engagement process in the, is the best I've seen in this state and immediate region. The effort exemplifies what a public outreach effort as part of a master plan update should look like. Um, at the chapter, congratulations to the city of Reno.
City of Reno, I wanted to say thank you for this recognition. Uh, it was an enormous amount of work. It nearly killed Brianna and myself. <laughs> and we are very proud to accept it on behalf of the city. The master plan has been a priority of the council. They understand the necessity for it at this point in our community's life. And community engagement is one of the things they stress the most. So we really listened to that mandate and tried to deliver. Yeah, and, it, and it's really helped us in the second phase of the master plan where we're actually doing the planning and updating the policies. So uh, the incredible amount of effort is worthwhile because uh, we really understand what the community wants and what they want the future of Reno to be. So thank you again. Our next award is for Outstanding Cultural or Environmental Plan. This year's winner is the One Truckee River, River Management Plan. The One Truckee River Management Plan seeks to bring together public, uh, both public and private groups as equal partners working together towards implementing a shared vision for the Truckee River. The management plan considers and recommends both short-term and long-term management objectives that are coordinated across jur jurisdictional boundaries for a One Truckee River approach. The plan followed a collective framework engaging a large core planning team and working with over nine issue subcommittees with over 125 stakeholders. Uh, the nine issue areas were water quality, social issues, stewardship, ecosystem, uh, quality of life, public safety, funding, recreation, and education. Uh, organized, uh, the organizations recognized here are the Battle Land Trust, Keep, and Keep Truckee Meadows Beautiful, and CFA Consulting. On behalf of the chapter, <laughs> congratulations. These are two nonprofit groups that came together because they saw a need. They, they looked at the Truckee River running through the community and said, this is a resource and there's not enough value um, placed on this resource. So they brought together government agencies, businesses, nonprofits, you know, every community group um, connected to the river, and, and they brought them together and said, let's come up with a management plan that helps us community-wide. So they did that not because they had to, but because they saw a need. Not because they had money to do it, but again, because they saw a need. So uh, on behalf of um, those two groups, I commend them, and again, thank you for the award. All right. Our last and final award is one um, there is no nomination process. Uh, I have unilateral decision authority on this. Um, so even though uh, in the past, I think Greg and I were, were laughing about this, people do try and nominate people and things like that. And we put our foot down. As president, we have the ability to choose who we want, correct? Yes. So uh, it, it is really an honor this year to, to recognize the president's award. Uh, this year's winner, and in the past we've done this different ways, kind of like drum roll and leading up to it. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, this year's award winner is... Dr. Fred Simon, so gives us some credibility with the PhD, thank you. Um, Dr. Steinman is currently an assistant professor, uh, assistant research professor, sorry, and leadership and economic development specialist in the Department of Economics at uh, the uh, University Center for Economic Development. Uh, in the College of Business at the University of Nevada, Reno. He began his professional economic development career with the City of Reno Redevelopment Agency. Um, since then, he has worked for the Small Business uh, Development Center, Bureau of Business and Economic Research, and for the Carson Economic Development Services Department in the City of Carson, California. Uh, Fred earned his doctorate in policy planning and development uh, with areas of study including economic development, public policy, public finance, and real estate development from the University of Southern California with a successful defense of his dissertation entitled, quote, The Twilight, Twilight of the Local Redevelopment Era, The Past, Present, and Future of Urban Revitalization and Urban Economic Development in Nevada and California. <laughs> By name alone, that should be, you know, just a <laughs> 
Uh, he also earned a Bachelor of Science and uh, Master of Science in Economics from the University of Nevada, Reno. And he is currently serving as a cap uh, chapter secretary for the Nevada Chapter of the American Planning Association. Um, Fred is, is definitely um, highly involved in the chapter. And we really appreciate um, all of his efforts and to uh, move the chapter forward, especially in our initiatives in engaging the university and uh, Nevada system of higher education. Uh, he served as co-chair of many EPA and economic development conferences across the state. Um, and, and most notably, what we have partnered with, uh, we, we as a chapter, I should say, have partnered with, with Fred on is the establishment of the Nevada Leadership Institute. And under his lead, uh, leadership, he is um, going across the street, going across the state, it's kind of the traveling roadshow uh, to train and educate community leaders of all backgrounds across the state of Nevada. So on behalf of the chapter, and well, on behalf of me, as a friend, <laughs> congratulations. before, as this is, I think, the seventh time I've been up here chatting uh, over the course of this conference. Um, I just uh, really want to say, as, as faculty at the University of Nevada, Reno, the state's land-grant university, I always feel, as faculty, we don't have the right to say no. Uh, and when public entities, organizations like the Nevada chapter of the American Planning Association comes to us and says, work with us. Uh, we are duty bound as faculty of a land grant university to say yes and to participate uh, really uh, with all the resources that we can bring to bear from the university itself. Um, there are really too many people in the, this room particularly that I have to thank for this. Um, each and every one of you, Marco, Jared, um, just everyone, um, you know, the reason why we've been successful with the Nevada Leadership Program and other outreach efforts is because you are willing dance partners. Uh, but the one person I really want to recognize is, of course, Mike Harper. Uh, Mike and I started the Nevada Leadership Program together three, four years ago, uh, and Mike has traveled across the state, north, south, east, west, all points of the compass, uh, just as much as I have. Uh, so in a lot of ways, I'd like to share this with uh, Mike Harper and, of course, all of you uh, who continue to really, really rejuvenate the state and make Nevada uh, the great state that it truly is. Thanks. Well, that concludes our awards presentation. Um, please join me one more time in congratulating with a round of applause. All the We are, are we still counting the money? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Treasure Jim's to count the money. So we will announce that at the end. Uh, okay. So now it is uh, my honor to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, she joined us, she is joined us Monday and has been at the conference all week with us, which I really appreciate. That is just, just a testament to uh, your willingness to engage the chapters, uh, and I really appreciate that. Our, uh, our keynote speaker is Cynthia Bowen. Um, Cynthia is the incoming APA president for the national organization. Um, she is with Rundell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we've already did it. Yeah, sorry. We, we've already done a big bio on her, and if uh, so, I won't go into it again. But please refer to your um, uh, programs for that. Uh, but really want to highlight um, as president of APA incoming. We really appreciate this. It, it, I said it on Monday. This is a rare treat for us, and especially to have you stay at the entire conference. We greatly appreciate it. So, we have the chapter. Thank you for being here, and welcome our keynote speaker, Cynthia Bowen. Yeah. We've got the bucket of money for the DeVol. Uh, last chance, we'll pass around one more time, and we will announce the winner at the uh, end of the at the end of the program. So you can stuff the ballots over here. And one quick public service announcement. Yep. Hi everybody, uh, Elena Batacharia, I'm the events manager here at Nevada State. Thank you so much for being here. By the way, we have absolutely loved having you. 
Also, because I know so many of you do love the environment, Nevada environment, I wanted to let you know that we are doing a hike this Saturday, um, October 22nd. The mountain directly behind us has actually been renamed Mount Scorpion after our, after our uh, mascot. So I'll have some flyers to circulate, but uh, nature lovers, it's open to the community. We'd love to see you. Okay, well, thank you, Nevada State, for hosting us here. It's always great when our local chapters can partner with our colleges and other our local communities to really put on great events for our planners. So thank you. Well, I want to thank you all for inviting me here and letting me come and listen and learn about all kinds of things that are going on. Um, I especially like to be able to go around and see the, in other states, the innovation, creativity, and um, unique situations that are promoting all sectors of planning. So thank you for having me here. Um, I also want to offer my congratulations to the winners um, of the DeBoer Awards um, for their distinguished efforts. You know, great job in really promoting planning. I also want to recognize the chapter leadership. So can I have the leaders of the ne Nevada chapter stand up? Yeah, sorry, Andy, you can't run out the door yet. All right, let's give them a Thank you to all of you for being here, being engaged in APA, and being our first point of contact with members. Um, it's really critical that we have you out there to advocate for the value of membership and for our members and making sure our profession, our organization is relevant. So thank you for all you do. So today I thought it was going to be fitting to talk about a new program that PAS developed or that APA has developed over the last six years. I'm not used to holding a microphone and talking, so. It is our Sustaining Places initiative that recognizes the comprehensive plan. It's the leading policy document and tool to help communities of all sizes achieve sustainable outcomes. Creating sustainability allows a community to meet the current needs of the current and future generations without compromising the ecosystem upon which they depend by balancing social, economic, and environmental resources, incorporating resilience and linking local actions to regional and global concerns. The comprehensive plan standards are documented in a PAS report 578 for communities to maximize the powerful potential of the comprehensive plan to serve as the main policy document for sustainability in communities. Sustaining Places started back in 2010 with the announcement of the Sustaining Places Initiative at the World Urban Forum in Brazil, Sao Paulo. So it was Bruce Knight who kicked that off. The initiative concentrated on the role of the comprehensive plan in integrating sustainability into human settlement. First through a task force that developed the overall guidance and then through a working group that developed more specific standards and best practices for comprehensive plans. And in 2013, APA selected 10 pilot communities in various stages of developing their comprehensive plan to help refine and finalize the standards as well as evaluate the proposed designation program to recognize exemplary plans using these standards. Communities shared their results at the work of the 2014 NPC in Atlanta. So in May 2016, APA launched the Comprehensive Plan Standards for Sustaining Places Recognition Program Pilot. A mouthful there. The program is a voluntary program right now for recognizing communities that are integrating sustainability into their comprehensive plans. Oh, I guess I should have shown you this slide of the, of the timeline. So APA worked with 10 pilot communities to finalize the standards in the PAS report. These communities varied widely in terms of size, their type of jurisdiction and geographic location. 
We also enlisted the assistance of three communities who had already completed their comprehensive plans. So those were Austin, Texas, Raleigh, North Carolina, and Norfolk, Virginia. We wanted them to be able to test the standards in scoring system that I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about later. So the comprehensive plan standards framework is designed to guide local communities in integrating sustainability into their comprehensive plan. These components, the principles, processes, and attributes go beyond the substantive decisions of sustainability to cover all aspects of the comprehensive planning process. The framework consists of six principles, two processes, and two attributes, all of which are implemented through a series of best practices and planning action tools to activate each principle, process, and attribute. The best practices should define what the comprehensive plan for sustaining places should do. The framework is based on extensive research of contemporary and emerging practices found in leading plans and planning er, literature. So the six plan principles are normative statements of intent that underline a plan's overall strategy, including its goals, its objectives, its policies, its maps, and any other content to be included within the comprehensive plan. And so I'm gonna take you through these one at a time, just kind of dis um, describing them. Because again, I think this program that we've put together really lays out a new way for folks and for communities to really develop their comprehensive plan. So the first principle is the livable built environment, and it advances the comprehensive plan as a tool for integrated and system-based approach that work together to provide sustainable green places for living, working, playing, and creating a high quality of life. It covers all aspects of the built environment, including land use, housing, transportation, energy, and infrastructure. The Libido Built Environment Best Practices really provide action tools that communities can put in their implementation section within their comprehensive plan in order to carry these out. 11 best practices are identified for the livable built environment principle, covering a broad, broad range of topics from transportation to land use patterns to green building design and energy conservation. So each of those, when you open up the PAS report, each of those best practices then drill down into examples. For, so for example, this is the multimodal transportation. And so then it talks about the reasoning behind and why that's important. The second principle, harmony with nature, recognizes the role of the comprehensive plan in sustaining the health of the natural environment and mitigating impacts of development on natural resources. The best practices here deal with preserving and reducing impacts on natural resources, integrating with the natural and built environment through green infrastructure, and addressing climate change. I know a lot of us right now are trying to figure out how do we begin to incorporate the elements of climate change into our planning, or into our comprehensive plan. So this gives you some guidance on that. The third principle, resilient economy, means one that can sustain itself and adapt to changing economic conditions. And really ensuring that the community is resilient by maybe not putting all of their eggs in one basket or relying on one industry and really that you're building on your unique local assets to diversify your economy i have too many things up here i have to try to juggle the best practices include some of the bread and butter planning practices. So, for example, making sure you have a balanced land use pattern and with a mix of uses. You should also note that the best practices are unconventional. Some of them are unconventional by economic development standards. Some of them do promote green business and planning for post-disaster economic recovery. 
I mean, a lot of the communities, maybe not so much here in Nevada, uh, but other country communities out in the Midwest and the West right now are seeing a lot of issues with flooding. And so those are things, disaster type things, that really need to go into how the community can recover from an economic standpoint. Principle four, interwoven equity, calls for incorporating equity into the comprehensive plan by considering who benefits from the policies, the priorities, and the expenditures. Now, as planners, we must recognize that within these new plans, there must be a crossover between the components of all the different components of plans that we're putting equity in there, instead of a traditional siloed approach, which our old comprehensive plans used to have. Now, equity is not really a standalone principle. You have to look at how do you incorporate it either into every aspect of the principle, the processes, and the attributes that you find within the comprehensive plan. So the best practices here call for taking the needs of the poor and the underserved population into consideration across a range of planning topics, from housing to health and safety to disaster planning because many of these populations are the ones that tend to be especially vulnerable to the impact of natural disasters. Policy five focuses on, or principle five, focuses on healthy communities. It recognizes the potential of the, of the comprehensive plan to be a tool for advancing healthy community goals. It's another component that really cannot be isolated because it's interrelated to the other elements in the plan, including transportation, housing, maybe limiting food deserts along corridors near neighborhoods. So this principle works together with the previous four principles. It supports the mission of public health and to fulfill society's intent of assuring conditions for which people can be healthy. The best practices range from active living and healthy food access to environmental health and equitable access to public facilities and services. Principle six is responsible regional, and it is the final principle. It calls for the local governments to connect with planning of adjacent communities and a region as a whole within their comprehensive plans. And I remember back when I first started doing comprehensive plans, you'd put your jurisdiction on there and then there would be a big white area with a name next door, either showing the county or the adjacent jurisdiction. And then that's how you, you were regional and considering regional. But nowadays, issues such as water resources, transportation, natural resources, they aren't limited to jurisdictional boundaries. They go beyond that. And so we really need to look beyond the borders to plan and to work together to address some of these issues. You know, the best practices for this range from coordinating local and regional land use to housing, open space, and transportation plans to find innovative and alternative approaches to promote regional cooperation and sharing of resources. Okay, so the six plan principles cover the substantial integration of sustainability into the comprehensive plan. So the next two items address the plan processes, which are authentic participation and accountable implementation. And they really cover activities that take place during the preparation of your comprehensive plan and define how it will be implemented. So, um, so I so totally needed to um, move that part up there, didn't I? So you can read it. You know, check in the PAS report. So there's my plug. Authentic participation. It deals with meaningful community engagement throughout the entire process of preparing and implementing the comprehensive plan. So in other words, though, even though you facilitate this process, you get your comprehensive plan adopted, Integration and activation of the public doesn't end with that. You should have additional measures and guidance to monitor outcomes and keep the community engaged in this. 
So best practices include involving the community at all stages of the planning project, engaging them in scenario development, and using a variety of communication channels. And as we've seen over time, you know, technology is now being included into this process. You know, however, even with technology, traditional practices of face-to-face -face meetings and discussions cannot go away. Technology needs to supplement what we're doing. And I think it also becomes kind of a concern of mine today because you see a lot of the millennial generation, and we've talked about this a number of times through the conference, you know, on their phones, always texting. But as a planner, if you don't get out there into the community, how do you really know the value system of the people that you're planning for? So best practice 7.3 is one that one of the pilot communities, Seattle, found that they did not address within their comp plan and they needed to work on. So it, this again illustrates how the different components of the framework are interrelated. Accountable implementation. The second plan process is effective, accountable implementation. I've always said to clients that whenever you're developing the implementation section of your comprehensive plan, it is often the hardest to do, but one of the most important chapters that you could develop beyond the vision, the goals, and the objective. And it really is the one that you have to spend the time creating. You know, because you're going on beyond just ensuring implementation beyond the physical side, but the policy side as well. It really is where the rubber meets the road. The implementation section of your plan should define specific actions, priorities, responsibilities, and resources to support the implementation. Other best practices include establishing metrics to measure progress and plan monitoring procedures to evaluate and adjust the implementation program as necessary. 8.6 really talks about how the standards are intended to function as a framework. It calls for the comprehensive plan to establish metrics but doesn't really prescribe what those metrics are. Those really need to be dependent upon the community and what they determine based on the local conditions and the priorities. Attributes are the final two of the whole 10 components. And these include plan making design standards that shape the content and characteristics of comprehensive plans. So number nine, consistent content, addresses the basic content of the plan itself, its rationale, and how its different components are blended into a coordinated, compelling, and consistent document. Best practices may include some type of strategic assessment of the, commission, or the issues facing the commission, and this might be in the form of a SWOT analysis. You know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It needs to really be, have a strong evidence base in the community conditions and trends, a future vision, goals, objectives, policies, and actions that build logically on the issues and the evidence, all which are provided in a clear and compelling fashion. The final component, coordinated characteristics, deal with the plan's identifying features its strategies and recommendations and how they are internally and externally coordinated and communicated in an innovative and persuasive manner. The best practices for these range from the basics of including complying with applicable laws within your state and any mandates that have come about to coordination of the plan policies and recommendations at the local and regional level to using web-based and other formats for making the plan accessible to the public. <clears throat> now, so of course, we kind of went through and also developed a scoring system for the comprehensive plans, you know, because if we're gonna spell out all these things, how are you going to evaluate your comprehensive plan or plans that you do in the future against a national benchmark? So I'm only gonna give you an overview of this. I'm not gonna go into the detailed specifics. 
because I know all of you want to kind of a lot of you want to get out of here and go to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, first off, when you put the scoring matrix together, you're really looking for an overall numeric score based on how your comprehensive plan addresses the best practices for principles, processes, and attributes. The base score, so the max of what you can get, is 255. Though that number may be reduced if there are certain practices that are not applicable. And so then you end up subtracting that from your score. Uh, the PAS report defines scoring criteria for five different categories. So you see them there, not applicable, not present, low, medium, and high. And the reason why we've done this is because you, you know, not one size is going to fit every community. And so you need to be able to tailor the plan to your community. You know, there's always the joke amongst consultants about, or the public sector planners against the consultants about, are you going to cut and paste my plan? No, you shouldn't be cutting and pasting the plan. It really should be developed based on the local criteria that's there. And so this scale allows us to do it. And so ultimately, what this comes up to, we were broken, be able to break it down into bronze, silver, and gold. So as I said before, you know, we started this process in 2016 of asking communities to submit their comprehensive plans to be included within the pilot phase of this program. So there were two peer reviewers, or two teams of two, trained in doing comprehensive plans and or sustainability rating systems. And so they went through and looked at these comprehensive plans. And then in October, so just a few months ago, in conjunction with National Community Planning Month, APA recognized eight plans through the pilot program. Five received the silver recognition, which you can see there, and three were received the bronze level. We will be conducting a second phase of this pilot in early 2017, but we'll be reviewing plans that were already initially submitted in the application window. But it doesn't mean that you can't get the PAS report and evaluate your own plan right now. And if your plan hasn't been updated in a while, this provides some potential guidance. You know, I guess the other important thing here is that the conference, the, these complete standards, and including their best practices and their definitions, can be found at this web address. So um, I think Fred has this PowerPoint. I probably need to fix those two slides where I wasn't paying attention. If you're going to post it on the website, so please do. But this is a link, applicable link when you get the presentation. And in the summer of this year, the board approved taking the planning advisory service, and so for those of you that don't know what that is, is where we have APA staff, so professional planners on our research staff, who research a variety of topics and areas. And so they produce these PAS reports, so the sustainable places. They put together these quick notes that talk about various topics, and they also put together essential info packets. Well, all of those will be made to all of the members in, in the coming year. So midway through next year, you will all have access to all of the research we've done and any research going forward because we are making it a member benefit. But right now, so starting, you know, this was actually a couple of days ago, you can go and click on this link and you can download these three packets right now to look at and evaluate your comprehensive plan. So that's why I said, you know, remember PAS Report 578. Because, you know, if we're going to come out here and be promoting this program, you need to be able to have access to these particular products. So, you know, how can we, how can we continue to better what we do in our communities? So, you know, finally, I am in great awe of the thoughtful work that's been presented here over the last few days. I mean, just tremendous amount of discussion, very good discussion, and really the perseverance that you've shown as planning professionals, especially given the unique circumstances and the hard hit that you received in the downturn of the economy. 
I mean, the way you continue to move planning forward is just amazing. You know, so if nothing else over the last couple of days I've said resonates, you know, I hope you leave here knowing that you are doing a yeoman's job, trying to promote planning every day and putting forth good planning. And I really, truly appreciate what you're doing for our organization and for the profession. So keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> Don't give up. And on those days that you're feeling down, you know, and discouraged, reach out to your network at APA. Reach out to the chapter, reach out to the leadership, and recharge your batteries. Attend these conferences because it's really what gets my juices flowing. So thank you so much for inviting me and have a great rest of your day. So I think it would uh, be a good thing if we gave one more round of applause for Cynthia. So Andy had to go, so I will uh, help us wrap up. Mike, I think, do we have a DeVol winner? We do. We do. And the winner is... Okay, drum roll your table. This is great, the coveted one, so... <laughs> You know, the rest of that stuff, who cares? But this one you get to put on your wall. <laughs> so first, uh, the good news is thank you to your generosity. We're adding $104 to our uh, scholarship fund. Yeah. Uh, there were 15 persons who were nominated for this terrific award. Uh, and uh, maybe it's only uh, Appropriate that the person who won it is also the person who will be selecting the uh, w the uh, folks who will get the funds. Uh, Marco, come on down. Marco, I would suggest to you that uh, please don't put that on the floor. We don't want your baby's eyes poked out. <laughs> You put it on the wall. Try not to break it. The year after I won it, the schmo who got it broke him, and I was <laughs> disappointed in that. Uh, and uh, put your name on it uh, when you are done. And uh, what Andy failed to tell you is you're supposed to tell us a story about that after uh, you uh, turn them back in next year. Well, I am already a, uh, the 2012 winner, and these were in my office, in the city manager's office, for, uh, for a good while. And I have always had to explain what this was and why, because I always got that look. But this did make its way to Ely. It made its way through uh, Lincoln County, all the way across US 50, and there are there are some photographs to prove that, as it made it up to uh, Lake Tahoe for the 2013 conference. So. Right. And good luck to getting it back up to Reno. Uh, <laughs> Carson. 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 Sorry. Carson. Yeah. Carson. Yeah. Perfect. I'm sure Chris has been on. Okay, that is a great segue to the next item. Um, just a reminder, we are in northern Nevada for next year's conference in Carson City. Angela, do we have dates? We don't have dates. We don't have dates, but we are in Carson, and uh, if you haven't picked up your pre-conference swag that's over there, please uh, grab some chocolate, uh, stress ball, or M&M's. Eminem. Awesome. All right, so finally to wrap up, I just want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, you saw over the last couple days we had all those sponsors. Um, I know that's been a tremendous help to the conference committee. Um, and specifically, Boulder City, who housed us for the first day of the conference, and Henderson and Nevada State College. I mean, Spe especially wow. Elena. She was yeah. a rock star. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Nevada State College. This has yes. been a tremendous facility for us. So, one more round of applause. Jared, do you have anything? Well, thank you, everybody, very much. I have uh, sleeves for your awards if you want to pack them in your 
Awesome. Do you want them? So with that, thank you everyone for coming. We really appreciate it. We had another great conference, and we'll see you in Carson City next year.